Welcome to Math Wiz with Dixon, the numbers writer. This is our second lesson on the series of how to use mathematical tables. In this lesson, we are going to look at using mathematical tables to determine square roots of numbers. To start with, we are going to be guided by two principles. Number one, the square root of perfect numbers are whole numbers. And number B, the square roots of non-perfect numbers are decimals. And in this lesson, we are going to look at square roots of non-perfect numbers. To start with, we have an introduction of square root tables. And the square root tables have the following format. At the extreme left, we have our x value. And the x value is the number we are going to determine using our mathematical table x values are going to learn from one downwards all the way to 99 so in this table we can read the square root of numbers starting from 1.0 to 99 then the second part of the table we are going to look at what we call the body of the table and the body of the table contains now the third significant figure and it will start with the zero and we go across up to nine and this is what we're going to refer to as uh, the body of our table the fourth decimal process can either be a one a two up to a nine and these we are going to refer to them as now the differences in this lesson the values of x will be divided into three categories the first category numbers equals to one or greater than up to the numbers that are less than 100 category two numbers that are greater than 100 and category three numbers that are less than one Starting with the first category, we look at numbers that are equals to 1, but less than 100. Our first example is the square root of 1.1. Notice that the square root tables can only be used to determine the square root of number x with 3 or 4 digits. Now that our number has 2 digits, we are going to allocate that digit with a 0. Hence, our new number become 1.10. Let us go to the table. At x, we locate 1.1. And inside the body, we locate 0. Where 1.1 and 0 meet, that is the square root of the number. Hence, our number become 1.0488. Our second example is the square root of 7.3 just like we have said earlier we can only use the table for three digits so our third digit we are going to allocate it to a zero hence our number becomes 7.30 on x we go down until we locate the value 7.3 and then in the body we have zero one all the way at zero we drop and where 0 and 7.3 meet, that is the square root of our number. Hence, our square root becomes uh, 2.7019. In our third example, we determine the square root of 1.75. In this case, we are going to go to x. Locate 1.7 at... After that, we go inside the table and we locate 5. Then we drop down 5, we go across 1.7, and the two of them meet at 1.3229, and that is the square root of 1.75. Our fourth question is the square root of 7.462. This number has four figures, so this is how we're going to do it we are going to go to the table and inside the table we're going to locate the first three digit that is we have 7.46 and 7.46 will have 
7.4 then 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 at 6 the value corresponds to uh, 2.7313 then we have a mean difference at 2 so in the difference column we locate 2 so therefore we have 1 2 3 at 2 2 corresponds with a 4 at the top of the mean difference column we are requested now to add the two and this is how we're going to add the last digit for 7.46 and the last digit for the two will correspond and we add in that order hence our sum become 2.7317 which is the square root of 7.46 our fifth example also have four digits and our question is square root of 1.389 in this case just like we have done earlier we are going to locate the square root of 1.38 and the square root of 1.8 under x we have 1.3 then we go up to 8 Hence our value become 1.1 our value become 1.1747. We have the fourth figure. Our fourth figure is a 9. So at the difference column we locate 9. So we have 1, 2, 3, all the way to 9. And at 9, our value becomes 39. So therefore, we are going to add 1.1747 to 39 and the 9 will correspond with the 7 the 2 being the last digits and we get 1.1786 we now proceed to the next category of numbers and these are numbers greater than 100 our first question we're going to determine the square root of 731 for us to do this one we are going to perform the following activity first we write our number in the form a multiplied by 10 to power n and the condition that we're going to give is that our a must be a number that is between 1.000 all the way to 99.99 the value for x we have looked at in category 1 and the value of n will represent the number of steps moved by the decimal point which must always be even and in that condition, therefore, 731, we are going to move the decimal point two steps, one, two, and our number become 7.31 multiplied by 10 to power 2, which can also be written as 7.31 multiplied by 100. Now, we are going to do the following. For the value is 7.31, we locate its square root from the tables directly that is under x under x we locate a 7.3 and then 1 and that will correspond to 2.703 Whereas uh, the square root of 100 is equal to 10. Therefore, we multiply the two numbers. And when we multiply the two numbers, our uh, square root becomes 27.037. Our second number under this category is 938,900. We get the square root of that number. Uh, first, we write our number in the form a multiplied by 10 to power n and as we earlier gave the, the conditions in part one our number becomes 93.89 multiplied by 10 raised to 4 which can also be written as 93.89 multiplied by 10,000 for the first number that is 90, 493.89 we are going to go to the tables and inside the table we have the following 
93.8 corresponds to 9.6850. Our fourth digit is a 9, and this 9 corresponds to 47. So we add 47. And when we add 47, 0 and 7 gives us 7. This is 9, this is 8, this is 6. Point. Hence, our number becomes 9.6897. We multiply whatever we have got by 100. And once we multiply by 100, our new number becomes 968.97. We now proceed to the last category of our number x and in this case we have our first example is 0 0.00143 which includes numbers that are less than 1. We now proceed to the third category. Our first example is 0 0.00143. This is a number that is less than 1. First we write the number in the form a multiplied by 10 to power n where we're going to give the conditions for a and n and a must be any number that is between 1.000 and 99.99 that is the number that corresponds to values of x in table of squares number two the, is the value of n and n is the number moved by the decimal point which must always be even number of steps and those are four steps has our number become 1.43 times 10 to power minus 4 which can also be written as 1.43 multiplied by 1 over 10,000 we three we go to the table at the x we locate 1.4 and here we have 1.4 then inside the table we go up to where we have 3 this is 0 1 one two and three hence our number corresponds with one point one nine five eight the number we have got we multiply it by one over a hundred and our value becomes zero point zero one one nine five eight another question under this category is zero point zero five four six two and again what we're going to do the first thing we write the number in the form a multiplied by 10 to power n and our number becomes 5.462 multiplied by 10 to power minus 2 which can as well be written as 5.4 5.462 multiplied by 1 over 100 so what we're going to do is we're going to take a 5.462 we read its value from the table so we go to add x we go to 5.4 all the way up to 6 and the number is corresponding to 2.3367 then we have a 2 and the 2 at a different column corresponds to a 4 and we add the 2 once we add the 2 this becomes 173 3 so our number square root for 5.462 is 2.3371 we multiply whatever we have got by square root of 1 over 100 and hence we're going to get our answer as 0 0.23371 Remember to subscribe to our channel so that you can get future lessons that we are going to be preparing. Thank you for your watching.